Okay, so uh, another type of graph traversal is depth first search, abbreviated DFS. So let's take a quick look at the basic principle behind graph traversal uh, with DFS. So the basic idea is that we start at some start vertex and then we go away from it and then we go farther away and even farther away and eventually we come to some sort of a dead end where we back up until there's a new option and take it. Uh, so probably many of you have uh, done something like mazes where you have to find your path through the maze and uh, you probably use some variation of this algorithm where you start at some start location and you traverse through the maze until you get to some sort of a uh, dead end and then you back up and you go someplace else and so on and so forth. Um, okay, so uh, just like we did with BFS, let's go ahead and take a look at the algorithm for this and then we'll run through a, a quick test case using the exact same graph that we just used for BFS. So just like with BFS, I'm going to take a quick look at depth first search here in Wikipedia. Uh, so here's the, the graph that they're looking at, which uh, looks pretty familiar. It's also the same graph that's used in the uh, description of BFS. Um, okay, so down here they've got two different implementations of it. Um, so one of the implementations calls DFS recursively. Um, so that uses the runtime stack to keep track of information, which is a little bit harder for to document. So I'm going to use this iterative version down below, which basically does the same thing, but we'll actually use a stack data structure to keep track of the details instead of our programming language as runtime stack keeping track of details for us. So this will be just a little bit easier for me to diagram. Um, it'll also kind of highlight that the space is actually being used even if we're doing this recursive version because we'll explicitly see the details of the stack instead of it being managed by, uh, by the programming language like Java. Okay, um, so just like before, we're using a, one of the data structures we've seen earlier in the semester. This time it's a stack. We're pushing something onto the stack. Um, until the stack is empty, we're going to uh, pop off the top thing on the stack. Just like before, we're indicating whether things have already been discovered or, or visited or not. Uh, if it hasn't been uh, discovered or visited, we'll somehow mark it to indicate that it's already been used. And then we'll... Um, look at the adjacent edges from it and push them onto our stack. Okay, So this seems very similar, but the major difference is we've got a stack instead of a queue, and that radically changes the order in which we're going to be processing our nodes. So let's look at this in our example problem. Okay, so just like before, we're going to process essentially the same graph. Uh, just like with BFS, I'm going to choose to start at vertex A, so I'll kind of denote that with a little incoming arrow here. Um, I'm going to keep track of my stack over here off to the right, uh, and I'm also going to keep track of when I discover nodes by putting them in a list. So I'm doing this to kind of help us keep track of the order in which we visit nodes, and that'll kind of help us distinguish DSF, DFS from BFS. Um, okay, so I'm going to add things to this discovered list when I actually cross them off and mark them as discovered. So our algorithm starts by creating our stack and pushing our start node onto the stack. And then we get into the while loop that's going to continue processing the stack until it's completely empty. So at each step of the while loop, it's going to pop off a node from the stack. So I'm going to pop the A off of the stack, and I'll kind of keep track of the fact that I'm at the A. Um, and then it checks to see whether the node's already been discovered or not, and it hasn't. So we first mark it as being discovered, so I'm going to go ahead and cross it off and add it to my discovered list here. Um, and then after we've marked it as discovered, we're going to look at all of the things that it's connected to, all of the uh, edges to adjacent vertices, and we will push them all onto the stack. So it's connected to D, C, and B. Uh, so B, C, D. I'm not doing these in any particular order. Again, that's, that's kind of defined by the implementation of your uh, graph. Um, Okay, so we've processed one node. Now we just repeat this process over and over and over again. We remove something from the top of our stack. So D will be the thing that gets popped off of our stack. We check to see if it's discovered or not. It's not discovered, so we go ahead and mark it as being discovered. I'm also going to kind of highlight this path that we we're taking as we discover things. And uh, uh, since it hasn't already been discovered, um, we mark it as discovered, and then we look at everything that's connected to. So it's connected to uh, F, C, and A. All of those get pushed onto our stack. Okay. Um, okay, so D was our second node discovered. Okay, we repeat the process. So we pop the 
thing off of the top of our stack, our A. We see that it's already discovered, so there's nothing to do here. Uh, next, we uh, pop the C off of our stack. Okay, and it hasn't already been discovered, so I'm gonna mark it as being discovered, and I'm gonna go ahead and add it onto the end of my discovered list and update the, the path that we've taken here. Um, okay, and then we expand around it, so it's connected to D and A, so they both get pushed onto our stack. We then um, remove the A from our stack. It's already been visited, so nothing to do. Remove the D from our stack. It's already been visited, so there's nothing to do. Um, okay, and now we remove the F from our stack. It hasn't already been visited, so we mark it as being visited, and we add it to our uh, discovered list. Um, I'm also going to keep track of the connection there. Um, and then we expand around it, so it's connected to D and G. So D and G both get pushed onto our stack. And then we repeat the process. Um, so we're going to pop the G off of our stack. G hasn't yet been visited, so we cross it out. I'll keep track of that, and I'll add it to my little list here. Um, then we add everything that it's connected to. It's connected to E and F. So I'm going to go ahead and push those both onto my stack. Again, completely arbitrary order. Um, okay, so we're done. We uh, now pop F off of our stack. It's already been discovered or visited, so nothing more to do. Uh, then we pop E off of our stack. It hasn't yet been discovered or visited, so I'm gonna go ahead and cross it off, and I'm gonna kinda highlight that again, and I will add it on to the end of my list here. Then we process all the outgoing nodes from it, so it's connected to B and it's connected to G. Uh, repeat the process. Pop G off of our stack, it's already been discovered, so nothing to do there. Pop B off of our stack, it hasn't yet been discovered, uh, so we'll mark it as being discovered. Highlight my path, add it to my list. Um, okay, and now we uh, add everything that B is connected to, so it's connected to A and it's connected to E. Um, okay, so uh, we pop E off, it's already been discovered. We pop A off, it's already been discovered. It's pop, we pop E off again, it's already been discovered. We pop uh, D off, it's already been discovered. C and B. Okay, so when we're all done, we have kind of this, this uh, long-winded path through our graph that went from A to D to C, and then we kind of hit a dead end. We couldn't get any farther away from A on this path, so we backed up to D and uh, then went to F, G, E, and B. So notice that it, it kind of got to B through this really long, complicated route through the graph uh, when it could have taken a single step. So this is kind of common with depth-first search. We try and get as far away as, as possible. When we hit dead ends like we did with C, we backtrack and we try uh, the nearest possible alternative. Okay, just like with BFS, um, this has essentially found everything that's connected to A. So we can kind of think of this list of things that were discovered as being all of the connected components in this particular, um, all the connected nodes in this particular cluster. Um, unlike with BFS, the order in which things discovered are discovered isn't really related to the um, minimal distance from A. So with BFS, we discover things kind of uh, in waves, things that are one link away, then things that are two links away, and so on and so forth. But that's not the case with DFS, which kind of tries to get as far away from the start as quickly as possible.